Okay, here we go. We're going to make another video tutorial of this piece of equipment we just got, the RGB Mini Link, RGB Link Mini Plus, I guess. You can see we've got four inputs and an output, which we're going to have to a monitor. We've got it unplugged to show you here. We've got the power unplugged as well. And then you can see we've got a USB network and we've got an audio cord, which we were testing, which is just eighth to eighth to just make the audio come off of a mixing board instead. And also we got the RGB link. Which one is this one? The 20 times zoom. And it's got SDI and we've got some other stuff going on here. RS-232 control, HDMI out, LAN and power. We've got it unplugged because Leo's gonna show us the first thing to do is get your IP address off the camera in the package or in the papers that we got. It says the proper number already. So we got that one and two now, one, six, eight. And we put a sticker on it so we know we need that right off the bat to program into here, right? Okay, so now he's got the camera plugged into the laptop just to make sure in case you don't know the IP okay, address. If you, don't know, if you don't know the IP address, uh -huh. you can show here we've connected the camera to the laptop. You can show and this here. is not a crossover cable. This is just a direct feed, so do not use a crossover cable. So it's connected okay. right to the laptop. You download okay. Wireshark. Okay. Open up Wireshark. And because we're connected directly, we have to use a local connection, not a, I think it need, we need power. Okay, so now we're gonna power it up. So they suggest on the, some of the sites to power up your camera before. I'm gonna even do it with one hand. So that's powered up now, okay? I'm gonna see it go to, to the green light. We've got this dislocated until this is done. And you know, we're just showing that we got the IP address. Okay, green light, we're good to go. Okay, you so open up Wireshark, yep. and then you just go here where it says Ethernet. You click on that. Wireshark is gonna start sniffing for the IP address, and you can see right here we have the IP address of the camera 192.168.5.163. And we use that. We put it on here, a sticker on here. Recommend on every camera you got, okay? And we use that information and put into the RGB link switch. Okay, so now we're gonna pull the plug on it. This is just testing on the bench before you don't have to save any okay, settings or whatever. Okay. So now you know it, but you wouldn't know if you had the, the bar or the packaging. You want to hold it here? Okay. okay. So now we are going to plug it into the LAN. It's right directly in. Now, if you have multiple cameras, you're gonna have to have a switch in between here. We're not gonna get into that. This is all powered up beforehand. We put the power into here, screw it on. Let's see everything there. All right, now we do have a monitor. So we have the external out coming to a monitor up here. <clears throat> we also have a little cheesy camera to show. Now this should pop up in a second. There we go. Program mode is the feed out. This one here is your fade control. So we've got a fader to another camera. Show this one over here. So we've got a little, little, you know, a little cheesy one now. We got Not two the cameras. Quality. Okay. It's, so got now. That, it's got that T bar as it fades. Mm -hmm. So you slide that bar back and forth, and then that fades the picture back and forth on the program. And there's multiple different settings. We're not even going to get into that. We're just getting how to set it up here. So the first thing is, and we messed with this for a little while, we didn't quite get it. The first thing is, you want to make your camera link up with this network. So it's the S button where it's hidden. So we're going to hit it four times. You'll see on the screen, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now you see this camera in load view. We're gonna say it's the camera number one. Now we're gonna jump down here on the right hand scroller down into the IP. So pass that IP setting, right? And press on it. So our first camera is the same number as what you see up there on the camera, right? Correct? Now we can jump back out of there by hitting the menu, I think. Now, you also want to enable, when you've left that setting, jump up to the pan tilt zoom camera, enable it. So it was off, now it's on. Now, if you're going to put a whole bunch in here, you can just jump down to each one and turn them all on, right? Okay. That probably stopped the recording, didn't it? Nope. Okay, maybe not. We're just getting a phone call in the background there. Okay, so you see that already. I'm going to back out of here again, back out again. Sorry, I think you have to hit the M menu. Back out again on menu. Well, we're on the other side of it, sorry. 
So that is already set up. Let me just check here. One, two, three, four. Camera one. Load view is okay. Save view, you can do that. Then once you're done on that, you want to go over to this other menu and put another IP address in, which is going to be a different number. I recommend a lower number <clears throat> than the cameras you're going to use. So we were messing with this for quite a while. So you jump all the way down past audio. We can probably do another video on all this. IP setting. So you can see I have one number lower than the camera. Now, before we were trying like three or four different numbers lower. If you do a number higher, it seems to pick higher numbers for the other cameras, but you can pick any, you no, know, like the longer, the lower numbers should probably be, I jumped out of there, hey? I see where you're talking about doing a professional video. <laughs> I don't care. So there we go. We've already set it 192.168.05.162, which is a lower number. Okay, we're going to jump out of there. Now, if you just hit menu or anything, you if for control over the pan tilt zoom camera, you have to be in this setting over here. So one, two, three, four. Back to where you're seeing where you're doing the IP, but go down to control, hit it, and then you have some variations. Pan tilt zoom is all and focus is all these two dials. So right now we can see the POS is lit up. So if I turn these. I have control. If you look over on the screen up top here, I'm moving it around, right? Okay, and now if I hit a button down here, take a look. You can hit the next button or zoom. So I have zoom on these on these dials here. I can zoom in and out. I don't know which dial it was. There you go, zooming in and out. All right, and then of course the third time you push the button, it's focused. I didn't really see it doing too, too much. It's very, very faint. So you have to be in that setting to control your camera. All right. And that's about it. Oh, we could do the OBS thing as well, right? Okay, okay so say we've got the cameras going. We've got another one. We're, we're doing all kinds of stuff, scenes or whatever, on your pan tilt zoom cam. Okay, you probably want to leave this on the pan tilt zoom setting while you're moving them around. So let's get back to this. So you can see me moving around the room here. Okay, now you take the cord that comes with it, USB to USB into your computer. And you want to download the OBS Studio recommended there is some software that comes with things automatically it won't detect everything so i'm just going to show you here you have to let's just erase it in this box down here do you see the sources you want to add a source first so first off we can do the audio which is the audio coming through the thing you can have the hdmi feed through too so audio input hit you can give it a name when i hit ok it's going to show nothing yet until you hit the default. Go down and pick the RGB link as the sound microphone. We're not going to use a microphone into it. We're going to use a mixer into that. We could show another video on that later. Okay, so now you want to add in the USB cord. So you add another feature down here. Find the video capture device. Now we can name that later. That says it's the RGB link. Okay it. And there it picked the webcam out of the computer. We don't want that. So... Just go into this Toshiba thing, which is that kind of laptop. It's the RGB link. Boom. Okay, now we have full 1080p, 60 frames per second, coming through our PTZ camera. And I think that's enough for this video. Right? There you go. Okay. Have a good one. And that's another quality video from Lethbridge Sound and Video. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye -bye. you.